Hello friends, welcome back. I've spent the last several weeks compiling and organizing nearly everything I could think of to help prepare a player for their first run through the Labyrinth of Legends. These days I feel like the Labyrinth is a bit overlooked because there has been so much more content released since, but it remains one of my favorite pieces of content in Marvel Contest of Champions and is still very satisfying to complete. Now this guide is intended for a player who is new to the Labyrinth. I'll cover the basic things you need to know, the options you have for designing a first path, how to build your team, resources, and finally a champ-by-champ -champ review of the easy path's opponents. So I'm going to be splitting this guide up into several parts for brevity's sake, and in this first part we're going to be focusing on the basic things you should know about the Labyrinth before you enter, and the options that you have for designing your first path. So the Labyrinth of Legends is open to all players who have reached the title of Uncollected. Uh, the Labyrinth has a total of 48 opponents and requires a minimum of 7 paths to fully explore. The majority of opponents exist on shared paths and will need to be defeated several times across different runs. Now the rewards, which we'll take a look at here, they're not awful for the skill required even by today's standards. So you get a total of uh, 65,000 5 star shards, you get a class awakening gem for your first clear, uh, and a total of 12, I think, tier 2 alpha for fully exploring. Uh, you also get 100 Sig Stone Crystals for exploration, and you get a, an exclusive trophy champion, which is this 5 star classic Ultron. So some will argue that uh, the Labyrinth isn't really worth the time and the resources necessary, but completion and even exploration, I would argue, uh, is easier and shorter than Act 6 and is really a good gauge of where your skills are as a player. And unlike Act 6, there isn't an overwhelming amount of niche counters required, BS interactions, and the content is much more forgiving than most other endgame content if you make a mistake. That said, the fights are still very long, require a lot of focus. So you should expect each path uh, will take you anywhere from 90 minutes to upwards of 3 hours to finish. And of course this depends on your team, the length of the path, and your skill. So there are 6 basic things that you want to know about the Labyrinth before you head in for the first time. First off, every opponent in the Labyrinth has the 10% Limber node, which means you will get approximately 10 parries per fight before your opponent becomes effectively stun immune. There are a few ways around this. So champions with increased perfect block chance, like Morningstar with 5 souls, can achieve close to infinite parries, even if they're very short. Champions with a flat increase to debuff duration like Domino with a Massacre Synergy can also achieve infinite parries. But for everybody else, you really only have three options for getting an opening. Bait out a heavy attack, intercept, or punish a special attack. The second thing you want to be aware of is the damage cap. So all damage from basic attacks and special attacks is capped at 50,000. This was originally intended to future-proof the content as champions became more powerful, uh, and it renders high damage burst champions like Proxima Midnight, or Sunspot, or Namor, and even Havoc as less than ideal primary attackers. Uh, the good thing is that all secondary damage gets around this cap, so this includes things like damage over time effects, so your bleeds, your poisons, and any bonus energy damage uh, that might happen as a result of a hit. So the next thing is the infamous Labyrinth Evade. So all opponents have a flat chance to evade an attack in addition to any natural evade abilities they may already possess. So this chance has never been officially revealed by Kabam, but it's kind of understood in the community to be around 1%. And sometimes it feels like opponents are evading far more frequently than 1%, and other times you can go several fights in a row without even seeing a single evade. So this evade will probably be the reason for the majority of your deaths in this content and is made especially annoying because there are very few counters to it. <clears throat> Champions with passive anti-evade abilities like Ghost or Nick Fury or Emma Frost cannot counter this evade. In addition, Champions with Cold Snap like Iceman or Vision Arcus also cannot counter it. So the details behind the evade mechanic and how it's actually implemented is really not something else that has been revealed, but in my personal opinion as a developer, I think that it's something like the ability accuracy of the evade is upwards of like a thousand percent. If you are really struggling with the evade, there are three ways to hard counter it. True, str true strike, true accuracy, and slow. 
So fourth on the list of basic concepts is the idea of the enrage timer. So there are two of these per fight. When you enter a fight, a gray timer will appear on your opponent. This is the first enrage timer. When it expires, the opponent will gain an enrage passive, which grants them increased attack, uh, increased ability accuracy, and then they fight more aggressively. Uh, and then after that, the second timer will start. If the second timer expires, the opponent gets massive power gain, which results pretty much in an immediate special 3 and your likely death. In the event you somehow survive that, the opponent also becomes permanently and passively unstoppable. Uh, so the most important thing to know about the enraged timers is that their lengths are determined by the attack value of the champion that you enter the fight with when you factor in synergies. In essence, there is a soft requirement in Labyrinth to have an attack greater than 2,000. The good news is that just about every R5 5-star champion meets this requirement already. Uh, but if you're using an R4 5-star, you'll likely need an attack synergy team to get the extended timers. So your fifth thing is to be aware of is that each opponent's attack value is passively increased based on the percentage of health that you are missing at the start of a fight. Unsurprisingly, the exact mechanics of this have also never been fully explained, but it's clear that the intention here is to encourage item use. So for squishy champs or matchups in which you know that in advance you'll need to take numerous blocked hits, you will want to consider healing up to full before every fight. Finally, the last thing on my list of Labyrinth Basics is the concept of enigmatic abilities. So 31 of the 48 opponents in the Labyrinth have a special ability in addition to all of their other natural abilities. They range widely in difficulty and were originally intended to change the way that you had to approach and play through the fight. So the good news is that these days there are champions available that fully counter most of the really difficult enigmatics. Champions with enigmatic abilities also have their health pools doubled, uh, and there's a few exceptions to this. Now, for most first clears, these abilities won't be relevant because the champions that exist on the easy path don't have them. Uh, but I've added it here in case you choose to design your easy path with one or more of the available enigmatic fights. So speaking of path design, let's talk for a moment about it. If you are a player planning your first clear, you really have three main options for an easy path. Now, you could take one of the more difficult paths on your first try, but I really would not recommend it. So option one is to stick entirely to the outside edge of the map. You'll have 20 total fights, and none of them will have enigmatic abilities. Unique encounters for this option are Vision, Age of Ultron, Spider-Gwen, and Red Cyclops on the right outer edge. So option two is to take what's colloquially known as the Colossus Shortcut. So on this path, you will skip all three of the unique encounters in option one and replace them with a single unique encounter in Colossus. So this will shorten your overall path to 18 fights, but Colossus has an enigmatic ability and also means he has an increased health pool. So uh, option three is really more of an amendment to the either previous option, and that is to include one or more of the corners in your first path. So this brings your total fight count to anywhere between 21 and 24 total fights. The corner opponents are A-Bomb, Guillotine, OG Spider-Man, and X-23, and all of them have enigmatic abilities. If you think you'd like to do exploration one day, I would strongly consider adding one or more of these corner fights to your first path, provided that your primary champion can counter them and or you have space on your team for another hard counter. Now this will obviously lengthen your first clear, but will make subsequent paths less of a headache. So on my, my easy path, I had room on my team for Void, so I added X-23 to that just to get her out of the way. The last thing I want to say about path design is to keep a map handy as you play, whether it's on paper or up on your computer screen. Now this is less important if you're just sticking to the outside edge, but the last thing you want to do is take a wrong turn and find yourself facing an opponent that you were not prepared for. Similarly, if you are working on exploration later, there is no feeling quite as soul-crushing as thinking you're done, taking out Maestro that final time, and then seeing the dreaded 99% completion. So as I completed my paths, I marked them down on my map so that I was absolutely certain I wasn't skipping any sections. So that's it for part one. The next part will be focused on team building, 
resources, and some important skills that you should probably master before attempting this content. If you enjoyed this guide, please hit that like button. Make sure you sub to get notified when the rest of it goes live. And as usual, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time. <music>